now that we know what mutations are, going back to biology, still on four, genetics. Uh, we just spoke about mutations, and now we're only going to be talking about the base substitution tution, mutation. And this is because we are now talking about a disease called sickle cell anemia. Now, what sickle cell anemia is, this is a this is a genetic disease. This is genetic. And what that means is it is inherited, right? So this is inherited. There are other diseases, for example, uh, AIDS or malaria, uh, rabies, things like th those kinds of diseases that are infectious. So you are infected by another, you know, thing or human or well, humans are technically things. You're you're infected by something that has this disease, right? If you are if your blood is sucked by a mosquito that is carrying uh, malaria, yeah, it's quite possible that you will contract malaria. Whereas if you have a genetic disease, this is inherited. So if, if you have a parent who is who is sick, there is a, a possibility that their child will also be sick. This is how it works. So if your parent has sickle cell anemia, it's quite possible that you will also have sickle cell anemia. And this is so important uh, because at least this, this disease, this uh, disease that causes mutations, is quite popular. Not necessarily popular, it's quite common. Around 1% of the African population is uh, is affected, which you know goes out to be one out of one out of every six hundred and fifty five Africans. Now, going on to explain what sickle cell anemia is, uh, this is where if you have a normal blood cell, right? Well, first of all, sickle cell anemia is a disease that affects uh, red blood cells blood cells and you know what red blood cells do is look like this if you're looking from the top or if you're looking from the side they look something like a pancake and, and what your red blood cells do is they carry oxygen O2 right and you've got yeah uh, you've got iron here sort of it's it's on one of these sides and what this iron does is it attracts this oxygen and so later the oxygen will sort of take this place of the iron and the iron will get sort of bumped and, and move somewhere over here to more to the other side. So here you've got your iron and then over here you've got your, your oxygen. And when you have sickle cell anemia, so, so your red blood cell, what happens to it is it has a sickle shape. And uh, what a sickle is, well, this is a sort of, this is a sort of like special knife, a special uh, device that is used to cut tall vegetation. If you have grass that's very tall, maybe some wheat that's very tall, uh, you'll use a sickle to cut it down. And it has this kind of shape, so that's why, you know, that's what we call this shape of a red blood cell. Uh, it looks like a sickle cell. And now what this means is that the iron is unable to correctly attract this oxygen. So the red blood cell either is unable to transport the oxygen or is unable to dis distribute the oxygen to uh, organs that need it or you know just just to deposit it in the correct uh, correct places. And looking at this from a now this was just a, a sort of a explanation what it is, what it looks like and what happens. Now, you know, we're talking about biology, so we've got to talk about our bases and the mutation itself. Uh, what this mutation does is we have an mRNA sequence where we have GAG, the, the codon GAG. And what GAG normally does is, well, actually this is, in fact, the DNA. Uh, GAG normally gives the mRNA CUC, right? which would later go on to give the amino acid uh, glue 
glutamine acid. And what glutamine acid does, well, this is uh, an amino acid that is, it is polar, and it is hydrophilic, meaning that it has a certain charge. It's polar, either a certain uh, weak plus or minus charge, and hydrophilic means that it likes water. It is attracted to H2O. Now, this is what happens in, you know, a normal situation to a healthy person. Whereas if you are affected or afflicted with with this disease and uh, so so mutated, at least in this case, I'm not trying to be offensive saying that someone is mutated just so that you can, you know, see the distinction. Instead of GAG, we have GTG. So when we have GTG in our DNA, remember DNA has thymine, this G not U, this gets uh, this is complementary to C uh, A C. So as before we had uh, C U C, we now have C A C. And the M R N A sequence C A C gives the amino acid valine. You know this is your amino acid, and valine as an amino acid is nonpolar nonpolar and hydrophobic meaning it does not have any charge and it is not attracted to uh, H2O to water in fact it is repelled and so if we look at this side by side over here see so polar nonpolar hydrophilic hydrophobic glutamine acid versus valine and why this is so important is that if we if we look at the what red blood cells are made up of, uh, the you know the part of the blood cell that carries the oxygen is the uh, heme group. Yes, this is spelled A E heme group, and what the heme group is made up of, uh, sort of these four uh, th these four chains. We have two alpha chains and two beta chains. Now, if we have the amino acid valine instead of glutamine acid, uh, these beta chains, they're not attracted to each other. Remember, because valine is nonpolar. And normally, these beta chains would be attracted to each other and would make sure that the, uh, the red blood cell has this nice round shape. Whereas if they're not attracted to each other, uh, you've got you know, your alpha, but then your beta sort of kind of like wanders away. And then this beta also wanders away. You've got your alpha here. And so now it has this distinct sickle shape. And because it has a sickle shape, it's unable, unable to transport oxygen. And uh, once you know when someone has this kind of disease, uh, there it's, it's said that you know they have sickle cell anemia. Now going on, it does not only, and uh, maybe I shouldn't say not only, but in addition to causing, you know, the, this failure of transportation of oxygen, it also uh, is prone to clog uh, veins or arteries, and so you know, here how it will clog veins and arteries. Now, what what a vein or artery is, and what it means to clog something is if you've got you know. Your, your vein or artery, and you've got blood flowing, right? You, you've got your red blood cells going uh, to, to your organs or you know, to the rest of your body from, from your lungs, at least in this case of oxygenated blood. So blood goes from your lungs, it's carrying oxygen, and it's supposed to go to the rest of your body and, you know, and provide that oxygen. Well, what happens is uh, these, you know, these blood cells, because they have the wrong shape, they can start clogging. They can start, you know, massing up in one spot in, in a vein or an artery. And what happens then is, unfortunately, you know, the, the red blood cells, they can't go back. It's not possible for them to go back. And so they keep trying to go through. And what happens is they start bulging or they start, you know, 
you've got a mass of, of blood just welling up over here, and eventually it pops. Your vein or artery pops once it is clogged, uh, and this is you know when the blood flow is very strong. Additionally, or rather alternatively, if the blood flow is not that is not that strong, if this over here is clogged, the blood will just sort of get to this point and stop, and so you know this will it will start going, uh, well it will um, it will go back a bit and be absorbed by something else and try and return to the lungs, and so what happens to you know whatever is over here? You've got no oxygen, you've got no you know normally what blood does uh, apart from carry oxygen is it also carry, carries nutrients, and so the organs that you know are are over here that are at the end of this vein or artery, um, they start dying. If, you know, this is a process called uh, necrosis. And so the example provided by the IV is the necrosis of uh, your kidney tubules. And so to, to draw this quickly, uh, let's take... I don't know if uh, someone has noticed, but I might not know exactly which is the red that I should be using. Anyway, so um, when you have your kidneys, normally uh, at least the diagram looks like this, right? So here you have the blood flow of the kidneys, and then over here you have these sort of uh, round tubules, and this is what they are. This is written like this. So, and this is the this is the kidney. So you've got blood flowing here. And what happens, for example, if the clot, if there's a clot over here, well, the blood stops flowing, uh, you know, the, the blood stops flowing there. there. There's no more blood here, which means that all of this starts dying. It's unoxygenated, there's no more nutrition, this all starts dying. And this is, if once you're labeling, uh, these are now necrotic, so necrotic. Tubules, while this over here is normal or undamaged. This over here is normal and damaged, while these three are necrotic. Necrotic necrosis, meaning you know dying or dead. And this uh, this clot, clot. When something is clogged, it is, or at least um, when cells they they start clogging things, they form what is called a clot which is, you know, a clot is going to be uh, a blockage, blockage of cells.